is brought to you by World Scientific. The event will begin shortly. Welcome, Hi. everyone. A few housekeeping notes before we start. <clears throat> Please have your camera off and mics muted. There will be Q&A session after the talk. Feel free to post questions in the chat box. Also, this webinar will be recorded and posted online. Today, we're very fortunate to have Professor Wally with us. Professor Wally is the Distinguished Research Professor of Physics Emeritus at Syracuse. He's the author of Chandra, a biography of S. Chandra Sika and the Kremlin Violins, a physicist quest for the secrets of Stradivari, and is founding member of the Forum on the History of Physics within the American Physical Society. In February this year, he put together an added volume of S. Chandrasekhar Selected Correspondence and the Conversations, which is the topic of our conversation today. And you can see from the screen that a 50% discount is being offered until August 16. We also have Professor Wally's daughter, Alaka, with us to moderate today's session. And now I would like to hand it over to Professor Wally and Alaka. Well, thank you so much, um, Yubing, and thank you to World Scientific for hosting this event. So glad to see so many of my father's friends and colleagues here with us today to listen to him talk about his newest book. And he's got one more in the works, which we'll talk about at the end. So, Dad, are you ready, Dr. Wally, to begin the conversation. Um, yep. Could you start by telling us uh, why you wrote this book, the book about Chandrasekhar and Lalita? Well, <clears throat> let me say this. Uh, first of all, I wrote three books about Chandra, Chandrasekhar. The first book was uh, the first one, General. The second one, realized that in spite of his great discoveries, he was not famous like Einstein. Everybody, nobody knew anything. So I wrote the second book explaining his achievements. And the third book, <clears throat> I found he had left a note that if be like, after his death, there was a book we should publish if Lalita and I like it, who would like to see it published? And that was the book of his scientific papers, individual papers. I still don't know why he wanted them to be after his death. I'm studying. Any case, these were the three books <clears throat> uh, I'd written about him. Then after a long time, um, I talked to Lalita wanted to write her book, but she said, no, no, don't, don't. So after her, uh, oh, after sure. her death, then I thought, you know, I had a lot of talks with her. Um, and also, most importantly, I found after her death, some of the, Chandra had given me com completely, almost completely, all his sheets uh, in the library, Chicago library. There were some that were left at home. They also came, they also make, became available. Then I looked at them and decided that I should conclude, I should not exactly conclude, but talk a little about Lalita. Because all the three books i written were mostly Chandra as a scientist, mostly as his great achievements in science and so that. Um, I felt uh, the human aspects um, how that he was in love with, and the time was different. They were, you know, in, in India at that time to have a falling in love in Mendon school and all that. These were sort of interesting things to bring about. And so I decided to write the, the last book, uh, including 
Lalita, their correspondence, how they met each other, how they decided, what problems they went through, um, and finally, how, how their happy ending. So that is the base, basic idea. If, um, if there are any questions, that is the whole, that was the whole yeah. reasoning. Yeah, uh, that's so, so interesting. And I think in, um, in the letters between Lalita and Chandra, and mm -hmm. Chandra and Lalita, we see a completely different side of Chandra than we've seen in any of your previous books, or um, we see more of a, you know, the human being, um, the Chandra who is a man in love. And um, perhaps you could read from page 252 um, of the book, just to give everyone here a taste of, of a very different Chandra than what we've seen in your other books. You want to, um, yeah. she's saying, why don't yeah. you read just the beginning of this letter, give the date. Read it out loud. Oh, here it is, 1934, May 31st. My dear Lalita, I'm so happy. You love me too, and that is what makes me so happy. Do you know, Lalita, when I fell in love with you, it was in January 1929 during the Science Congress week. I have always loved you since, but during those years, I thought it's so impossible that you should ever love me. Love me. Uh, I often convince myself that what Eddington says in his nature of the physical world, uh, in parenthesis, equation one, for that fearsome person who is perpetually reasonable, certain things are not allowed, falling in love, for instance. <laughs> so basically, they were so, there's there so little communication between each other when they met at that time in India, there was nothing like, um, you know, I asked her when I talked to her, um, did you talk, did you get together, did you walk? No, 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 they said. All the time they were at distance, talking very little, um, sometimes going uh, behind, going home behind the ride and so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> when he left soon after, um, um, one year or one and a half year, when they knew each other, I asked to see in my conversations with her, did you decide that you're going to get married? In? Married? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. It was not like in uh, America, it's India. <laughs> so they are basically uh, six years they depended on writing. In all those write, writings, there was not much statement of love, this and that. They're mostly talking about you know, just like friends. And, and, and so it was, it was the conditions difference, the timing is difference than what we think. And he got so involved with his uh, um, discoveries and his work. By then, he began to think whether he should go back to India after, uh, because there was no possible scope for him, he thought. No particular, he had three years uh, scholarship to go and come back. This was the government scholarship. So what he should do, so, so he felt that all this business about love, et cetera, may not be very important. We don't know each other. And so there was a little bit of a um, talk about in letters saying, and she replied very honestly. In fact, one should read her letters. 
She says, do what is best for you. <laughs> and I will, I know, I know I can never meet you, your scientific abilities and this, but, but so I am and so on. One of those, one last letter is very wonderful in the, in the book. So all this is a, com, com, made me interesting story about, um, about the times, about their love, and eventually uh, also he decided not to get married because stay in outside India. And his father was not very happy about it. He said, come home, get married. First he thought that something is wrong with Lalita. But then he realized that it was his son. So he really wanted him to come after, you know, small, um, he could come. Uh, by then he had another appointment for three years. So come, stay some small time, get married and then go back. So that's what happened. He came back and once they met each other, there was no question. They immediately got married and came together. And then uh, they first went to Cambridge for some time and then to uh, America. He had a job in uh, uh, laboratory and then eventually professorship in Chicago. And they moved first a little away from Chicago in the downtown. So all these details are, of his life are made a new book. That's why I wrote about it. The first, uh, all those books are mostly about science, scientific achievements. Well, Is what, that, answer? What, Is that a good answer? Yes, yes, yeah. and we could keep, we'll keep talking a little bit about their relationship because you also have in the book, a conversation with Lalita, which sort of mirrors what you did in your very first book about Chandra, where you have the conversations at the end of the book with Chandra. But I want to point out something that Jim Crittenden has written in the chat, which is how rare it is to have a um, human uh, the side of a person who has been documented in terms of their scientific career. And I think that's yes. what's so special about this book is, um, is that you get a real flavor, a sense of Chandra um, as a person and Lalita too, who in her own right, I think as you point out later in this, uh, in your conversation with her, she wanted to be a scientist also she had hoped that she could come to study abroad can you talk a little bit about lalita in that way yes um if i remember you know uh, she also wanted to be a mathematician uh, and uh, and want to go to england and so on and so forth but unmarried um, to go to england was not possible so she gave up that and she becomes a teacher. And so she sacrificed her own self-interest in her own um, wantings. That was the, that was a great uh, sacrifice that she put in. Yeah, I mean, and you think about how many women have done that for their husbands, you know, whose scientific careers flourished and the uh, woman has been sort of the very supportive person. And you talk a little bit um, in the book as well throughout about the struggles that Chandra and Lalita faced in terms of discrimination, um, both in, uh, well, in England but, uh, but in America. And Lalita talks about that in her conversation with you, how she often felt left out um, of like the wives of these scientists at Yerkes and so on. Yes. You wanna well, talk? <clears throat> when she went to when she went to America, the she had other problems, taking care of the house, um, 
by the way, she was very much interested in music, singing, and so on. So I asked her some questions. Why didn't you, uh, Chandra insisted, why don't you take, take a, you know, take a course and then get a degree? She refused to do that. She felt that there was a great responsibility of taking, <coughs> excuse me, taking care of the house and uh, taking care of him and so on and so forth. So she gave up all that and uh, just, um, she used to play some good music um, with some friends and so on. And in America also the treatment for the other wives uh, did not treat her uh, equally. They, they thought that she was from India and sort of, some many times she felt insulted. But then if you read carefully, she was so, so thank, so I mean, th thinking person. She never thought anything bad about them, and um, and I don't remember all the texts in the book, but she talks about um, um, how you know you should be tolerant about people, Gandhian approach, and so on and so forth. If you read the, if you read the book. So she was a remarkable person. She was unbelievably that I feel that I was very lucky to write about her and know her. And I, when I talked to her, and she was very modest and always said, you are writing about him. Why do you want to write about me? And so on. But we became very good friends and yeah, it was, it was um, very well. Uh, moving on, so, uh, moving on um, yeah, here's a beautiful picture. Mano Manona is going to post, I hope, of um, Chandra I have and another one I want to share. Uh, Manona, my sister, is there with my father. Here it is. Here, oh, it is. here we go. Yeah, yeah um, there it is. Yeah. That's a good picture, yes. Yeah. That's a very good picture. Yeah. So moving on, in addition, obviously, the book has mo many other correspondence. And in particular, there's a correspondence between Chandra and his father um, that begins the book. And sort of like when Chandra first went to England, and he's writing back to his father. And even before he goes to England, all sorts of the letters when he's um, in Calcutta and so on. And we get a really good sense of that relationship between Chandra and his father. And one of the questions that people are asking because people sent in questions ahead of the conversation was like, why was Chandra's father insistent on Chandra doing um, physics and not focusing on mathematics because Chandra really wanted to be in pure mathematics as I understand it. Why was his father wanting him to go into physics rather? No, <clears throat> it's the opposite. He wanted him to be, uh, take mathematics <clears throat> because uh, he was very smart and uh, um, what is the name? Ramanujan. Ramanujan was very famous. So he thought he would take mathematics instead of physics. What does physics do? And he had no idea. And um, or take the examination so that you go to England and come back as a some sort of a government officer. He did not know the beauty of physics and uh, so <clears throat> Chandra did not obey him. He took physics, but doing physics, he became more mathematician. So he was very happy. And so he, uh, in one of the letters, if you read, he writes back to him that I'm glad that <laughs> I took physics <laughs> and I became uh, mathematics too. 
In fact, okay. the first time I heard about Chandra was when I was a student in Banaras Hindu University studying physics. And I met a friend somewhat older than me, uh, two years older, he was a mathematician. And we became very good friends. Um, he was very, um, very friendly and a very well-known mathematician. He was the one who first told the name of uh, Chandra, Chandra Shaikhar to me. And let me see, I wrote a little bit about, about him. Uh, I first became familiar with the name Chandra Shaikhar in India when I was studying for the MSc degree in physics at Banaras Hindu University. It was there I met VLN Sarma. VLN Sarma, a few years my senior, a doctoral research student in mathematics. His unsuring manner and his wide range knowledge in mathematics and physics drew us together. He became my mentor and close friend. He first told me about S. Chandrasekhar, the eminent Indian astrophysicist whom he described as an incredibly capable applied mathematician whose <laughs> contributions were far more outlasting than other known Indian physicists whom they, I, whom, whose name I knew. Saha, Mahana, so, so many other Indians were also made great uh, names at that time. He says he was much greater than all of those. He said also, Chandrasekhar would have been a Nobel laureate if he had been in physics instead of astronomy and astrophysics, which at that time were not eligible for the Nobel Prize. Nice. Nobel Prize was only for physics, chemistry, and medicine, and astrophysics uh, was not considered, uh, only it became much later for astrophysics. Uh, when they discovered new things about uh, astronomy. So, so talk about the, yeah. the letters with the father. Hmm? Alka asked you about the letters with the father. The, 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 so, relationship, the relationship between Chandra and his father was hmm. a good relationship, right? Chandra really um, felt... No, but uh, just says one, one more interesting thing. Sharma and I did not discuss at length Chandra's scientific work or uh, any details of his life. We knew, however, he had settled permanently in the United States and we were aware of the per perception in India that for Indians to leave their motherland and settle elsewhere was a des desperate act akin to tre tre treason. Treason? Treason. Treason. And considering the circumstances in India, the atmosphere was not conclusive, not conclusive to continued persistent research. We were aware of the stagnant atmosphere at BHU and so on. So we really did not feel the other people felt that these people who go abroad, they are really um, insulting India. But um, he was the one who said, no, they are, they're just doing, you know, science and mathematics and so on and so forth. So, so I had to, he, he made me more in, he was the first person who made me know Ch about Chandrasekhar before I came, before I came to know him. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's good. That's good. Because then later you, of course, followed Chandra's path and you came to America as well and um, established yourself in America. Um, you lived in Hyde Park about, we lived about a block from where the Chandra Shakers were living. I remember you talking about getting up the courage to cross the street and meet Chandra eventually and to write ask him if you could write about him. Uh, that, that he did. 
Yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite understand. She's just remembering when you met Chandra, uh -huh. uh, we lived near him in Hyde Park <clears throat> in Chicago. Yeah. And you had to get up the courage mm. to meet him. Ch uh, Chandra's I mean, uh, father? No, no, just oh. Chandra himself. But yesterday, oh, oh, oh. yesterday. Oh, right. right. Yes. Um, I, I, no, I first met Chandra when he came for a colloquium in Madison when I was a student. He was a friend of um, um, my, my own research professor, Josh. Uh, um, so he had invited him and he gave a beautiful talk about his uh, research perfectly well written on the thing and so very impressed me very much. But not only that, uh, my professor invited me and Kashi for dinner with him that evening before he went back to Chicago. So I had, that was the beginning of knowing him, my personally. And then later on, many of my friends were talking about, you know, he simply explained uh, I came here for six years, this and that. They all had, knew about his great co contributions. And some people said, why shouldn't one write his biography? Why shouldn't you, why don't they ask me, some of the friends? Uh, and meantime, I heard many interesting stories about him through friends uh, in Chicago, Carl Sagan and so on and so forth. And everybody, you know, he was kind of an ideal, but very reserved. He didn't talk with anybody, anything other than physics or something. So he was kind of isolated person, but great um, astrophysicist. So somebody, my friends, um, one particular architecture said, why don't you write about him? <laughs> uh, particularly when they learned that um, he had some sort of a heart problem. Uh, so, uh, he was giving a talk in uh, Can Canada, so I went there to the talk and met him after at the lunch and said, I want to write about you. I said, uh, why do you do that? Why do you want to waste your life? <laughs> so anyway, so fine, come and talk to me. So I went after coming back. Uh, he never told me that he had a heart attack, but the first time I went into his office, we started talking. And um, the first time I saw this picture on the side of his office, and I stood there mm -hmm. looking at it. Show the, uh, show the photo, um, Anona. Yeah, I'm gonna put yeah, up, I'm yeah. gonna put this up. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me, go ahead. Can I have some water? That's yeah, right here. Oh, right here. Here's the picture. Yeah. <clears throat> this was the picture. I stopped. Uh, what is, what is uh, so interesting about it? So I, after, when I was looking at it, after some time he said, you know what, what happened? And he told me the story. He got this picture and he liked it. It was in some journal. And he somehow liked the picture, photo or something. And so he wrote to the journal asking them uh, to send him a copy. Oh, um, the reply he got was, we can't send you a copy. You write to him directly and he might send you one. So they gave him the name of the artist. <clears throat> and the artist wrote him back, I'll, um, let me know why you like that film. Why do they like that painting? If you tell me why you like that, then I'll send you. So and now the, read, you can yeah, read that. And send the, <clears throat> the reason Chandra wrote to him. You read it, no, no, no. You want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. 
What impressed me about your picture was the extremely striking manner in which you visually portray one's inner feelings towards one's efforts and accomplishments. One is halfway up the ladder, but the few glimmerings of structure which one sees and to which one aspires are totally inaccessible, even if one were to climb to the top of the ladder. The realization of the absolute impossibility of achieving one's goals is only enhanced by the shadow, giving one an even lowlier feeling of one's <laughs> position. I thought well, that was a brilliant answer ever written by anyone. So I was very impressed with that. And many times later in his own work, he uses that idea when, when he cannot see something and so on and so forth. And I have used that idea, writing um, paper. May I travel at this time? So ask Alka, is this a so, good time for him to tell the Vietnam story or do you have other questions? Yeah. Well, we, we could talk for a long time about everything in this book, but I think he wants to tell this story. I think it's very moving from the, okay. his encounter in Vietnam. So yes, please do tell that story. Okay. It's yeah, very tell. relevant to the book and it's also in the in the foreword to the book, in the acknowledgments rather okay. of the book. So um, yeah. I yeah. think it's very important, important for me. Um, I went to after nine years, the book came was took nine years. I was in Vietnam for giving you know, lectures in physics. And staying in a guest room, I saw a gentleman. Um, he, he spoke a little bit. I don't know how the Vietnamese. I didn't know any Vietnam, and had some problem in my room. So I mentioned to him, and he came and fixed it. He was a worker, and he saw two books of Chandra's books lying there, and he looked at them and went away. He didn't say anything, but next morning he came and said, sir, can I borrow that book for a day? <laughs> I just want to see it. And said, sure, and so I gave him the book. Then it went on. Because he was a worker, he couldn't sit with me and talk with me. You know, I was a distinguished guest. So it went on uh, and every few days he'd come back and say, can I keep it one more day? Can I keep it one more day, sir? I said, oh, no. <laughs> I said, what is this? And so I used Chandra's technique. Finally, before I decided I had to leave, I said, you know, I don't mind. You seem to like the book. I'll give you the book, but let me know why you like the book, just like Chandra did for the painter. Mm -hmm. And he replied, yeah, the, mm -hmm. That reply. He wrote a letter. Yeah, he wrote he wrote a letter, handwritten letter. I don't want to so thanks a long time. <clears throat> but but he replied in wrote. Uh, I'll just read the parts of it. Uh, I'm returning here with the book which you had kindly landed me. At first, I asked for my, the book because I had wanted to read an English book. You see, uh, you see, <clears throat> sorry. For the past 16 years, after the liberation of South, I have not had an occasion to come across anything written in English. And even if I had, I wouldn't be able to afford anyway with a long stretch of unemployment. I began to read the book immediately the night you gave me. At first glance, I thought it would be boring because I would come across scientific terms of which I am totally unfamiliar. But I said to myself to read it anyway. After the first few pages, all of a sudden, things began to happen 
and all simultaneously are so enchanted not only by the image, no matter of, no, no matter what factly presented of the man, but also of the author whom I was most fortunate to have met and talked. The book, the uh, man had the author made such a profound impression on me. Uh, all were extremely beneficial to me. And this is, a, this is a missing link for Darwin's, of course, in my chain of thoughts for some 30 years on how to map on one's life that is useful to somebody sometime. Yeah. And it goes on, but the most interesting conclusion was, unknown the man, Professor Chandra, had bestowed on me so great a favor in the form of mental wealth that I'm totally overcome. To me, Chandra is not only an outstanding a scientist, which would mean very little to me, but he is so human in every respect. In fact, so human that he's, oh, he's uh, close to me, truly, you could feel his presence as a friend and that to love and as a saint to worship and all at the same time. How can one describe one's inner feelings when one is submerged in gratitude? The un unsurpassed beauty of a shining example of one so great and yet so unassuming and the happiness of having come unexpectedly to a tremendous treasure. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. enough. <laughs> but that, that well, tells me that scientists or whatever learned people should not just this, this man was not so educated, written, but he liked to read. So that, that is very, gives me a great impression. So that is why many times I have made an attempt to write uh, the political my old discoveries and something, because people who cannot do that, people who don't have that opportunity, doesn't mean that they will not enjoy it. Right. And so that is why that that Chandra's that um, that was the oh. lesson I learned from him. <laughs> yeah, that's why that, that is very important. Thank you. It's beautiful. Sorry. No, it's very very beautiful and very moving. And I think you know this this book um, this book completes a circle um, in terms of the multifaceted description of the life of this remarkable scientist and man and the role that, you know, not just Lalitha, but his father. And also you have in this book, his correspondence with other physicists of the time with Eddington, who was a huge, you know, yes. protagonist in his life, as you wrote in the biography itself. So I, I think, um, you know, this is such a valuable conclusion to the Chandra story that you're telling here. Um, yeah. all well, of enjoy. And anybody, anybody can enjoy this. I mean, it's not, I, I'm not a physicist, obviously. <laughs> I have so enjoyed reading this book because it does it's very, very moving to see the way and and because letters um, letters are honest, right? When you write a letter, you're not thinking, "Oh, I'm going to have this published or someone else will see it." And here we see him writing to people and to his father and to Lalitha with such integrity and honesty. It's very moving. Yeah. Thank right. You. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Um, I wanted 
to open it up to questions now because we already had something like 15 questions that were sent in ahead of time. Um, and I think, um, am I right that other people are putting questions in the chat um, as well? So um, we'll try to, we'll start with some questions that came in um, and some we've already talked about a little bit, but um, there, there was a questions, a couple of questions around Chandra's relationship with Raman. Um, if you could speak to that, um, did he and Raman, did Chandra and Raman Chandra? talk after he came TV to the Raman. United States? Oh, C.V. Raman. Raman. C.V. Raman, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not very much in, uh, in detail. When he was a student, uh, he went with him you know, on a ship in a minute to Calcutta um, before going to England. Uh, Raman had just made that great discovery and he was with him on the boat and they talked and all that. <clears throat> But somehow he didn't, uh, was not greatly, you know, the differences was Chandra became a <laughs> curious mathematician. Raman was an experimenter and um, he didn't particularly, um, particularly became very friendly. He had respect for him, uh, for his Nobel Prize and all that, but he was mm -hmm. not really, uh, of the same thinking. So, mm. CB okay, yeah. that's interesting. Oh, that's, uh, uh, and then um, another uh, question. Uh, sorry, uh, go ahead. Had, sorry, let me complete. His father had talked to him and a job ready for Chandra <coughs> from coming back and working with him. And he didn't like that idea to go back to uh, Madras and work under C.B. Raman. And Lalita also tried to work with, um, she didn't succeed. She didn't like it either. Hmm. C.B. Raman was somewhat of a, uh, I don't know, I don't uh, know much about him, but it was a great physicist, great discovery, but there was a common, there was a controversy yeah. between him and Krishna and so on. Anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> so, um, Professor Ashtaker, who is here with us today. Hello, uh, hi. Um, he is asking, when did you make the, con when did you have the conversation with um, Lalita? Was it after Chandra had passed away, after Chandra's death? The conversation with Lalita that's in the book. Did you understand? No. When did you have the conversation with Lalita? Uh -huh. Was it after Chandra passed away? Oh, after Chandra. Or before? No, had... no, no. No, most soon after that. I, I used to visit whenever I went to Chicago, always go and talk to her, visit her, and. Uh, uh, when, when Chandra was alive, uh, many times I, he would invite me to his house and have lunch. And so I was very friendly with uh, Lalita. And Chandra used to make very good, um, I don't know the name, <laughs> uh, things. And uh, so I was very friendly. I knew her very very well from the beginning, before right. and after his death also, I used to, whenever I went to Chicago, I always go and visit her and talk to her. And uh, oh, she was, so the, so was specifically, of, uh, and always yeah. used to say, when am I going to him? And yeah, yeah, I remember. I, uh, Abhay is asking specifically about the conversation that is at the end of the book. When did you, when did you record that conversation? 
When did you record this conversation? When did you record it? Selected correspondence with Lalita Anthony. Do you remember no, when you recorded it? Not at the very end. After the correspondence. No, no, we found it. Okay. No, only after. Yeah, it was after. after he died. The only after. Yeah. 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 Uh, I didn't know that these uh, these these things were given to the after her death. Some of these letters where she didn't give give it to me when um, they were all with her. Chandra gave all his uh, to the library, and writing his book, I had all of them. But these, some of this stuff, um, uh, they were at his home and they were in the hands of Lalita. I didn't ask her and she didn't give it to me, her letters at the time. I only got them after her death. But, yeah. you, but you spent a lot of time with her after Chandra's death. And it yeah. was at that time that you, um, recorded these, her stories? Oh, not yeah. a lot of time. Whenever I went to Chicago, I used to visit, have lunch and talk to her. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, require how she, okay. you know, so she has some difficulties of uh, servants. And I said, why don't you go to this? Uh, there was a house nearby taking care. Why do you want to stay here? And so I used to be friendly behavior with her, yeah. but we didn't, we didn't, she didn't give me any of her, these letters, et cetera. Right. They came only after, after her death. Right. Yeah. So there's, um, there's a question that came in that is about um, the, um, lectures that Chandra gave about Claude Monet and um, um, the question um, the questioner uh, says around the time of Chandra's centenary celebrations Professor Freeman Dyson wrote an interesting essay on Chandra's contributions to the science of the 20th century it was only after reading this article that I really understood the import of Chandra's remarkable lecture on the paintings of Claude Monet and the landscape of general relativity. Your yes. perspectives on these will be much appreciated. Can you comment on that lecture series? I think it was must have been the Ryerson lecture, right? I I vaguely remember having read it for a long time ago. I don't remember. Uh, okay. I I know what you mean, but uh, okay. I'm sorry. I yeah. Um, then there is a question about kind of the reception that Chandra received when in that famous. Um, you know, controversy with Sir Arthur Eddington. Right. And uh, the questioner says, there were many physicists present in that famous meeting and they agreed with Chandra's finding but failed to support him. Then the questioner is asking, does that atmosphere still exist today? Is there still that, um, you might say the discrimination that Chandra felt at that time, is that still prevalent today? No, I don't think so. I don't, uh, uh, Eddington, well, quite, Eddington was totally wrong about thing. I don't think there was anything, uh, the co co conference in Paris, he kept on still talking about it. Chandra just forget it. And so. But do you think something like that could happen today? Oh, something can. 
I don't know. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to say. Would, would, say. Any, would any of the other scientists who are here with us like to answer that question? Abhai or Mark Trodden or Ray Sawyer? Yeah. Yeah, they, Ray Sawyer, right? There are many. He's at, yep. She's asking, Abai is going to talk. Mm -hmm. Who's go, is someone uh, going to comment? Yeah, Ray is going to comment. He just unmuted himself. Uh, uh, well, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm here, but I would like you to repeat the question. I think the question is like the kind of um, reception that Chandra received at the time of the controversy with Eddington, where the physicists knew that he was right, but they didn't uh, publicly support him, if that is still something that could happen today. I think it's something that does happen today, but I'd rather not, I'd actually rather not elaborate on that because it could get us onto uh, controversial shores. <laughs> okay. So, you should ask a, a less biased person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Then um, there are some questions about um, from Satya uh, about the relationship with um, Chandra's father and you know, he's curious, why did Chandra call him Babuji? Because that's not a South Indian, typical South Indian, you know, term for father. So do you have a, do you know why he called him Babuji? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, no particular reason, I guess. I, 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 yeah. yeah. It is uh, Baba, yes. Babuji, it, it is a sort of common, it's not so very really uncommon. Yeah, I was wondering whether it was because he grew up in uh, Lahore. Lahore and um, is it because they tried to adapt to the local culture or something? I don't know, I don't know the answer. <laughs> Baba, Sounds like a Hindi. It's, it don't look like a uh, Tamil, South it's Indian. South Indian. But, um, That's, he's asking why. Uh, yeah, it, it should be more like Appa uh, rather than in the Kannada say Appa. Yeah, yeah in uh, Tamil Nadu would probably say Appa. But but I'm I'm just thinking here that maybe it is because they were trying. To to adapt to the local culture when they were in Lahore, right? Yeah. I'm not like uh, uh, Calcutta. In Calcutta, probably, I don't know whether, yeah, Babuji may be used in Calcutta too. Uh, no. However, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Well, one reason maybe, you know, his father was um, working from Northern India in the, on the railway road. So some, some sort of a, um, uh, Hindi influence could be. That's the only guess I can make. Yeah. He used to go to North India with the railway. He was the manager of the railway and so on and so forth. So uh, think, yeah. there's a very it, there's a very nice um, comment here in the chat from Dimpna Callahan, who's a professor of humanities and Shakespeare scholar at Syracuse University. And she says, what is great about this book and about Kamish himself is the way that science and the human condition, the very foundation of the humanities are brought together. Bravo. <laughs> I, I think that's so true um, about you, Dad, and about Chandra. And in the book, um, and in many of the books, you talk about Chandra's love of Shakespeare 
and the humanities. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? He was very fond of Shakespeare, right? Yes, yes. You want to talk about that a little bit? I, I don't. Uh, we used to talk mostly about science, mm -hmm. not so much about literature, Chandra and me. Uh, did, so I, I don't you, recall we had any great discussion okay. uh, about, about his. Um, some of the Indian history and all that we used to talk, but not very much um, other than astrophysics or physics. Um, so um, I can't uh, I can't answer the question. Okay, okay. Almost, uh, maybe you should just ask one more question and then we can. Okay. Uh, let people yeah. realize. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna keep the. Um, Zoom open after 6.30 if people want to chat more informally with, um, with my father. And um, so maybe, um, Dad, I don't know, there's, um, is there some final thought that you want to say here to conclude this formal part of the session? Sure. Uh -huh. Is there some final thoughts you yeah. want to closing remarks? No. You you go ahead make a little closing remark. Well, um, what can I say? I'm very happy to see interested in the book, uh, reading the book, and uh, you know, it's always. He's always happy to know that people you know, with all your effort like to read the book. And so, and also, I think I'm fortunate enough to have the chance to, to do these things. So, my primary interest is in physics, and still, uh, once in a while, I'm happy no. that. I'm that made. that reminds me. Why don't you talk about the your book that you're currently working on? Oh, <laughs> well, <clears throat> he's ninety three and he's working on his next book already. Uh, <laughs> his children yeah. are in awe. His title is uh, "Paths and Fancies of Particle Physics." Really nice. Last century. So, <clears throat> it partly involves some of my own uh, work, select, selected, um, selected contributions, you know, that I've written a book about uh, selected works of Chandra and so on and so forth, some selected works of uh, my own contributions, and the history of how science from these Sabians, how the society changed, how the various kinds of uh, 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 science came into picture and all the discoveries were made and how that changed into different systems like Marxism, socialism, how they came about. But that's not what I'm talking about, but how the scientific discoveries made the changes in human lives. And uh, particularly last century, the first it was all about the, for instance, um, Earth going around the sun. It was dis discovered, but uh, Galileo's are continuing making a, a telescope and really verifying it. What is the difference between science and just philosophy? The mathematics that you use science and how you make predictions and how experiments are done to verify them. So, uh, in the last century, particle physics, finding quarks and leptons and how many types of quarks, what is their symmetries, all are very interesting uh, mathematical uh, description of these. 
just not just mathematical description, but they can be all verified by experiments. So that is my interest at the moment. Well, that's a great um, note to end on. Science is never ending. My father <laughs> is never ending in his thoughts and his work. And uh, we're all inspired by you and by everything you've done. And thank you so much to World Scientific for publishing this book. Um, it's available to everybody, as we said at the beginning. And um, I think we can now just open it up for informal conversation for a few minutes. Is that okay. right? Uh, yeah. We have now come to the end of the today's talk. Thank you all for attending and thank you, Professor Wadi and Alaka. Uh, this new book truly adds a significant personal dimension to an extraordinary scientist and gave us a deeper understanding of the man behind the, behind the legend. Uh, it has been a delight having all of you. As Alaka said, we'll keep the Zoom meeting open. You can, if you want to turn on your cameras, or unmute yourself and have a chat with Professor Wadi, you're welcome to do so. But um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for all for coming. <laughs>